is Lawrence Anhold, and I'm the author and illustrator of lots of children's picture books. And The Hypnotist is my first full-length novel. The Hypnotist is a story about tolerance and prejudice, and it's about a young black boy by the name of Pip living in an orphanage in the deep south of America. And in the dead of night, he's taken out of the orphanage and he goes on a long journey through the night with a strange white bearded man by the name of Zachary. He's taken to a very peculiar farm by the name of Dead River Farm. And his job there is to look after the farmer's wife, Lily Bell. And he also meets a mute native American girl named Hannah. And behind it all, is the dreaded Ku Klux Klan and the Jim Crow laws which are designed to keep black people in their place. So it's a terrifying time and I tried to bring some of that alive in the story. All of the action, all of the events are seen through the very strange eyes of an Irish hypnotist by the name of Jack Morrow. So I'm going to read a short section from The Hypnotist. In the moonlight and the light from the barn, Pip felt dangerously exposed, but he followed Hannah silently zigzagging between the vehicles. Pip noticed the distinctive black and white of a police patrol car, but this only added to his sense of alarm. The law didn't side with boys like him. And as they approached the mouth of the barn, they dropped down onto their hands and knees and they scrambled from one car to the next last, Hannah stopped and they rested panting against the huge wheel of a customised truck and now they could see directly into the brilliantly lit barn. Pip's first instinct was that he was dreaming. One Christmas his parents had taken him to the theatre and he had been awestruck by the dazzling spectacle of costumed characters and now he witnessed something equally out of this world. Inside the barn a surreal pageant was taking place. Thirty or more ghosts were gathered. Each figure was dressed entirely in white robes with a flaming torch in his right hand. Many of the creatures had ropes around their waists and long armed white gloves. And over each heart was the symbol of a white cross in a red circle with a single drop of blood in its centre. But what made Pip's skin crawl was that where their head should be, each ghost man wore an unfeasibly tall pointed hood with black sockets like the gaping eyes of a skull. Pip gasped for breath and without thinking he reached out and slipped his arm around Hannah's waist. One of the spooks was speaking. His voice sailed out through the still night so that they could clearly hear each word. I want to thank every last one of you for coming tonight. The exalted Cyclops will be joining us real soon. So while we're waiting, we're going to go right ahead and take the oath. Clansmen, when you're ready now. Each man extended his left arm in salute. And with each call and response, they slowly raised their torches. For God. For God. For country. For country. For race. For race. For the clan. 